everybody. My name is Richard Conte. In the picture you're about to see, I play the part of Dr. Gilbert, an intern at Bellevue Hospital. With the permission of the city authorities, all the facilities of Bellevue Hospital, located in the heart of New York City, were made available to the film production crew. The story itself is completely fictional and did not actually happen in Bellevue Hospital or in New York City. During our stay at Bellevue, in making this picture, we saw the real Bellevue at work in its wards, its clinics, and research laboratories. And we came to know the unrivaled opportunities offered by this great teaching center to young students of all races, colors, and creeds in advancing in their chosen profession of medicine. On this same site will rise during the next 10 years the new buildings of Bellevue, already planned and begun. And they will form the world's greatest and most complete medical research and teaching center. To the old and to the coming new Bellevue, and on behalf of our entire company, we salute the magnificent professional skill and highest devotion to duty known throughout the world as the mark of each of Bellevue's 1,300 doctors and 1,100 nurses. Get him ready for the operating room. Emergency, acute retention. There's the worker. Urology. Dr. Grinnell, ambulance case brought in by Dr. Foster. Male, 60 years old, retention 30 hours, on his way up to OR. Yes, sir, I'll call him. Oh, Dr. Foster, Miss Sebastian wants you to... Anesthetist, OR B6, acute retention. Dr. Grinnell, sodium pent. What about Miss Sebastian? She'd like to see you when you come in. She's on traumatics. Stella, put that retention in B6. Dr. Grinnell's on his way up. Tell Miss Sebastian I'll see her later. I'm going out for a smoke. If we get a buzz, you can send a driver for me. <laughs> Squirrel about 20 minutes ago, intern named Foster, caught one in the head. Did he call it? No, no arrest yet. Who's here from homicide? Barrow and Travis, they're inside talking to the chief of staff, 
stop the shop leak. Who called the squeal in? The nurse named Wardley. Any statements? Not yet. What you been doing since you got here? Dating nurses? All right, Inspector. You finished, Doc? Just about. Anything you can tell me? Sure. He's dead. It's okay to handle him? All yours. Miller, get the ballistics, man. I'll detect the Travis, Inspector. Homicide. You carrying this squeal for downtown? Just as far as the local squads will need us. My partner, Barrow, is over in the hospital with Dr. Sharp, with Chief of Staff. You find any open lines? Nothing. Feels like it's gonna be a tough one to knock down. Mm. We haven't found the slug yet, Inspector. You examine the wound? Yeah. 38. Let's go inside. A call came in. The driver went out and... and found him. And then you called Dr. Sharpley? Yes, and Dr. Dutra and I examined him. But it wasn't necessary. Who's Dr. Dutra? Well, he's... he was forced to terminate. Where is he now? He had to go back to obstetrics. Will you please call him, Dr. Sharpley? Ask him to meet us in his room. Had Foster ever told you anything that might... No, sir. Nothing. This is Dr. Nothing Sharpley. Nothing at all. Yes, Dr. Dutra to go to his room. It was before. just that when he came in, he seemed so tired. Worried? No. Just tired, I guess. Then he started out, and I remembered to tell him that Miss Sebastian wanted to see him. But he said he just wanted to go out for a smoke. And... That was... Thank you. You can go now, Miss Ward. You see, Inspector, it's just as I told this gentleman from Homicide. I don't know what more anyone can tell you about Forster. He was a very bright young man. He was well-liked by everyone. I just can't imagine... Who is Miss Sebastian? Sebastian, Ann Sebastian. She's a ward nurse, traumatics. Is she in the hospital now? Yes. Call her. Tell her to come to Forster's room, too. Sure, he had a gripe. All of us do, I guess. But for future and all that. How are we going to get into practice? We have to be hospital residents all our lives. Like griping about the food in the army. Maybe no more serious than that. But the last few months, Foster seemed to... Well, I don't know. He was worried, jittery, bitter. Jumpy as a cat. Could hardly talk to him. Did you try? Sure I tried, but it was impossible. Why did you bother? What? Well, I don't know. I never thought about why. What do you mean, why did I bother? What kind of a question is that? You live with a guy, you like him, you worry about him. You, you... How long did you know him? Well, we, we bunked together for almost a year. You worked the same ward with him? We worked all the wards. Psycho? Sure. Foster and I, we worked psycho for three months. We worked all the wards for the experience. Where was he working? He was on a bus, but his regular ward was traumatics. That's the accident ward. So you just liked him and worried about him. But every time you tried to get him to open up, he told you to mind your own business. Look, Inspector, a guy's got a problem. He don't want to talk about it, so okay. I figure it's his problem. And I don't push my nose in where it isn't wanted. Well, unfortunately, Dr. Dutra, it might be that his problem finally killed him. So his problem becomes my problem. You follow me? Was he borrowing much money? You ever meet anyone simple enough to lend money to an intern? Why did Anne Sebastian give him the air? She didn't. How do you know? You said Foster was a clam, never spilled anything. So you don't push your nose in where it isn't wanted. So how do you know? Don't ever argue with a cop, son. Just answer his questions. Please come in, Miss Sebastian. Thank you, Doctor. You can go back to work now. I'm Inspector Gordon. This is Lieutenant Miller. Would you like to sit down? I'm all right. You must forgive me for troubling you at this time. I know this has been a very terrible shock to you. Since you were closer to Foster than anyone else in the hospital, I thought you might give us some information that might help. Dr. Dutra has told us that you and Foster plan to be married soon. Married? We were very fond of each other, but... I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't feel very well. Yes, I understand. We can talk later. Thank you. Oh, Miss Sebastian, just one thing. Foster worked with you in the ward? Yes. Did you lose any cases recently? Lose any? Anyone die who might have had a relative who would blame Foster. Oh, no, sir. What did you want to see him about? When? This morning. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You asked Miss Wardy to tell him you wanted to see him. Oh, I just wanted to talk to him. That's what I'm asking. What about? Nothing, Inspector. I just wanted to talk to him. But he didn't wait. 
Had you quarreled? No, sir. I, I, I was just worried about him. Why? Well, I don't know why. He, he was unhappy and depressed, and every time I tried to talk to him, why, he, he would... So much worrying going on about Foster without anybody knowing what was eating him. Do you have any idea who might have shot him? I wish I did. Thank you, Miss Sebastian. You can go now. I want Foster's complete record. Hospitals, schools, everything you've got. And I want to talk to all the nurses, doctors, interns, everybody you ever worked with. I can have his complete file and a list of names this afternoon. Thanks. Let's go. Yes, Chief. Detective Travers is carrying it for a homicide. No, the gun didn't show. I got the harvest squad grappling the river with a piece. Right. 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 Any suspects? Four. They look healthy? No. Know what I think, Al? I think you're wrong. What's your figure? First, I'll give you yours. You'd say psycho. I'd say psycho. Give me the rest of it. I'd say Foster was pushed across by a released psycho out of burn against him. You want to work that line, Barney? I'll make book we don't find a rational motive. I think the kid was clean and clear. It has to be a psycho. How many men will you need? Many as you can give me. I'll give you what I can spare. But I still say you're wrong. The knife, the strangle job. That's my figure for a psycho. He needs a personal contact, the satisfaction of being right in there. Like in the Ronnie Gibbons case and a dozen others. We've had psychos who've used guns before. Sure, but they never deal just one in the head. Once they start, they can't stop pumping. Okay, Barney, you work that psycho line. Get rolling. Right, yeah. Sure, I've been rolling. Sure, I'm tired. And you want to know something? I've worked every line, and I'm no nearer the killer now than I was when I started. We're as far apart as A and Z. But I'm not getting off this squeal until I knock it down. Any lines you've opened look promising? I think my men are through. They're stepping on each other's heels. Lieutenant Miller is still hammering on the psycho angle. But I don't buy it. We're not going to find what we want outside the hospital. We'll have to dig from inside. Deep inside. I'm still listening. I'm going to use three men from my confidential squad. You'll have to get me the cooperation of the hospital commissioner. All right, Al. I'll give you a little more time. I don't want it. I can't work against time and against a killer. It's one or the other. Get me the commissioner of hospitals. Of course we want to find Dr. Foster's killer. As hospital commissioner, I'm deeply concerned. But you must realize that you're asking me to help prepare fictitious records for three detectives. Put them into the hospital. One of them is an intern. Drastic, huh? Inspector, it is my duty to know a little more about this man. I'm not trying to hide anything from you, Dr. Holland. It's just that very few people know about the confidential squad. I think you can rely upon my discretion. Let me begin by explaining that every police inspector has a small group of men working under him known as inspector's men. They're not attached to any one squad. They work wherever I may assign them in the district under my command. I call them in whenever my regular detective squads hit a dead end. I see. We try to keep their identity secret, even from all other squads. The three men I picked for this assignment are highly trained specialists. Detective Rowan, the man I'm sending in as an intern, has actually had two years of pre-med, served three years in the medical corps during the war. That will help considerably. For the past week, he's been in Los Angeles getting a make on his new background. We've got the complete cooperation of the L.A. police and the medical school of USC. He flew back this morning. We've even got a family out there for him. The address of a Los Angeles detective named Gilbert. That's the name Rowan will use. I haven't filled him in yet on the job. I figured to brief him here in your office with your help. Yes? Send him in, please. Inspector? Commissioner Holland, Detective Rowan. How do you do, sir? What is your name?
Fred Gilbert, sir. Where and when were you born? Los Angeles, California, June 15th, 1919. Do you maintain an address there now? Yes, with my mother and father at 7620 Olympic Boulevard. Tell me something about your school background. Well, sir, I graduated from Los Angeles High School in 1938. I got my uh, B.S. at USC in 42. Who was the principal at Los Angeles High when you graduated? Dr. William Collier, sir. Where did you live at that time? At 2998 Veteran Avenue. After you received your B.S., you took your M.D.? Not immediately, sir. I enlisted in the Armed Forces Medical Corps. Served in the Pacific until 44. After my discharge, I went back to the university for four years of medicine. Got my M.D. in June 48. Who was your commanding officer in the Army? Colonel Stewart, sir. 15th Medical Corps. I presume Colonel Stewart would be willing to write a letter of recommendation? He already has, sir. Colonel seems to think highly of you. What does your father do? I beg your pardon? What's the matter? Don't you know what your old man does? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. My father is an electrician employed by the motion picture companies. We didn't plug that, Inspector. Nobody's asked that question before. I'll get that squared away. Since you received your M.D., have you had any practical experience? Yes, I worked as ship surgeon on the S.S. Honolulu, July 48 to February 49. My employment record is in the files of the Trans-Pacific Steamship Lines in San Diego. What would you do with a severe asthmatic? Sub-Q adrenaline. What would you do with a case of renal colic? Antispasmodic and sedation. Well, you'd fool me. Yes? Send them in, please. Commissioner Holland, Detectives Diamond and Reese. Hello, sir. How do you do? All right. Pull up chairs. We'll get to you as soon as we finish briefing Fred. Generally, your duties in the hospital will be fairly simple. Usual morning and night rounds, the writing of case histories. When you're making the rounds, you will be accompanied by the ward nurse, who in many cases knows more than the inexperienced intern. You won't go far wrong if you let her take the lead. But I must caution you, be constantly alert. Avoid conversations with doctors which might expose you. And above all, never permit yourself to be forced into a situation or you'll be required to do any extensive medical work. If such an emergency should occur, I rely upon you to call for capable assistance, even though it might mean exposing yourself. I understand, sir. And here is all your necessary identification, Fred. Study every card, every word. Be on your toes. Once I'm inside, is there a specific line you want me to follow? The commissioner is going to start you in the traumatics ward. The nurse on that ward is named Nan Sebastian. There was some kind of thing between her and Foster. Maybe she knows something, maybe she doesn't. Stay close to her. You'll keep me informed to Lou and Jim. When a meeting is necessary, we'll arrange it through them. That's about all for now. This is your application. Study it. I'll help you fill it out. And the board was very favorably impressed by your record, Dr. Gilbert. The Commissioner of Hospitals and the Dean of the Medical School seem to have taken a special interest in you. And I know you will fulfill their expectations. Now, you've been granted a one-year internship, and you'll start in traumatics. The salary will be $50 a month, and you'll live here at the hospital. And you'll report tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the auditorium. And good luck. So once more, I say, welcome to City Hospital. And once more, I take this opportunity to emphasize that we expect of every member of the staff complete singleness of purpose in dedicating themselves to a life of service. Dr. Connell, a resident, will now conduct you on an indoctrination tour of the hospital. You should make every effort to acquaint yourself with the physical aspect the general routine, and the paperwork which will be expected of him. This is to be regarded, of course, as a preliminary tour. Later on, you will be made thoroughly conversant with the workings of the particular ward to which you will be assigned. And now, gentlemen, I present Dr. Alex Connett. All right, sir. 
right, you fellas. Now, follow me. Uh, you can leave your hats and coats here. You'll pick them up later. Start with the skyline. Now take a good look. The last you'll see of it for a long time. Now you'll get the hang of things as you go along. Just don't try to be an eager beaver and you'll get by. One of three chapels we have here, available for our use at any time. Now let's go upstairs. As you can see, we're just setting up for a bronchoscopy. observation on the patient's chart. Now, if you write an order for the ward nurse to administer something to the patient, no matter what it is, anything from sedatives to a glass of water, it must be entered on the chart. Now, don't be too quick to write an RX. That's a prescription, fellas. Especially sedation. Now, rely on your ward nurse. Happy is the intern with an experienced ward nurse. He's bound to be a great success. Especially if he knows enough to keep his mouth shut and his ears open. Well, this, my friends, is traumatics. As any fool can plainly see. Now, who's uh, starting in traumatics? I am, Doctor. Ah, you should be a very happy intern. You've got an experienced ward nurse. And uh, I mean experienced. Come on. And... This is Dr. Uh... Gilbert, Fred Gilbert. Yes, uh, Nurse Sebastian. How do you do, Doctor? Miss Sebastian. Now, Dr. Gilbert is assigned to traumatics. You'll help break him in. I mean, the routine, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, uh, there'll be plenty of time for that later. You still have to get your room assigned and pick up your uniform, and there are three more floors to go, and my feet are killing me. Now, I've given you this advice free, just out of the goodness of my heart. It cost me four years to learn it for myself. The all this babe wanted to do was to eat. Eat, eat, eat. Brother, could she show them the way? Yeah, that's the trouble you take on one of those student nurses. They haven't got their full growth yet. <laughs> Everything on that side of the room is yours. Everything over here is mine, including the walls. Looks like all I'll need is a door. 
My name is Steve. You're for dramatics, aren't you? Yes. So am I. I've been on night rounds, but the shift is just changing. I think you'll have a gal named Anne Sebastian for ward nurse. I just met her. Out of school long? About a year. Spent some time with the Trans-Pacific Lines. Which school? University of Southern California. Well, we've got a man from there. What's his name? Uh, Nestor. Uh, class of 46, I think. Two years before me. How long have you been here? Too long. I'm eligible to become a resident if I like. If I like. Give me an alternative. What's wrong with private practice? Oh, nothing. All for it. As soon as I save up 15, 20,000 bucks to set myself up, I'm out of here like a shot. It shouldn't take me more than another 30 years to save that out of my 50 big ones a month. Maybe if you cut out cigarettes, you'll be able to make it in 29 years. Of course, we can always marry the door of a coal tycoon. All kinds of tycoons floating around. I'd like to have a nice, clean-thinking young doctor for a son-in-law. So where's your problem? Right here. Oh, I see. Guys like us can't afford the luxury of falling in love. Not unless you were sired by some kind of a tycoon. Even a minor league tycoon would do. What's she like? Just a girl. She's a student nurse. You'll probably meet her. Name's Kathy Hall. Hasn't got us a dime. Well, you never can tell what'll happen. Maybe some rich charity patient will leave you a million for saving his life. Oh, you might be walking down the street one day and get shot in the head like, um... What's his name? Foster? Yeah. What happened then? Some nut gun. The police get anywhere with it? Police? Great for writing parking tickets. So you figure a psycho got him, huh? Wouldn't be surprised if Foster paid him to do it. This may feel a little warm to you. But don't move your leg until the plaster is settled. Just relax. Yes, Surgeon. It's ten grand for one operation. Now how he did it? He worked hard, studied hard, slaved for years as a resident. Finally, he married the daughter of Mr. Steel Corporation. He carves up his wife's girlfriends at least twice a year. Saratoga. The water. Haven't had the winner in two weeks. You don't live right. Can anybody see Anderson? He's going on 24 hour relief. Horse in the pit tomorrow, named Andy's son. Handicappers figure him 30 to 1. Yeah, but I don't know. Andy's son. Maybe think of Anderson. Just talking to him today. Might be a hunch. Might be smart, but. I think I'd put a couple more for Anderson, too, just for luck. Find one that sounds like my name, Bob, and I'll book the bet for you. Wise guy. Big doctor with big words, but no faith in hunches or things like that. Things that really matter. <laughs> a lot you young ones know. Gilbert, did you ever meet Pop Ware? I've seen him around. Sure. It's Anderson's roommate, Dr. Gilbert. Pleasure to know you, young fella. Pop's been around here longer than the city charter. 
He's the only civilian we allow in this room, for a very good reason. Anytime you've got a heavy date and you need a few bucks, count on Bob. He likes to give it away to his boys, don't you, Bob? Don't you get smart with me. I've seen too many of you come and go. Thirty years. I've run some great men up and down my night elevator in my time. Yeah, and when they were just young squirts like you. But I always knew the ones who were going to be great. And the ones who were going to turn into fancy pants needle pushes with big words out of big books. If I were you, son, I'd sure keep that needle mighty close to me when I get out of here. As in, I'd sure start the debt quick. What's your opinion, son? My opinion is that it's a great pleasure to know you, Mr. Ware. Yeah, now, hear that? Mr. Ware. Mark me. This boy's gonna be one of the great ones. If you see Anderson, Tell him Pop's got the big hunch and that there's two riding for him on Andy's son and the fifth tomorrow. Well, want two dollars wait for you, son? No, I... I don't think I can. No obligation. <clears throat> Keep it in my book. If we hit, we'll get roared and drunk. A cake of beer for everybody. Just make mine big enough to lift with one hand. I've got to go to work. Then I see a young fella worth keeping your eye on. Hey, Gilbert. Hey, you're a tough citizen to catch up with. I hear you're from USC. You must be Nestor. That's right. Well, I'm glad to have seen you. Look, I'm on rounds. I'll catch up with you later, huh? Yeah, sure. Covering sugar. No covering sugar. Eh? It's possible, Doctor, that he had insulin before he was admitted, which he didn't report to medical. Mm -hmm. I see. And since he was admitted? 30 units regular. 30 units. Superficial veins and armor thrombosis, Doctor. There's a good vein in his leg. Use it. Glucose ready, Doctor. Yes. is beginning to take effect. I'll call medical. We should have some way of checking how much insulin was taken before a patient was... How's that 
insulin shock, Doctor. How did you know it was an insulin shock? Diabetic coma, temps abnormal, skin clammy, no. <laughs> so what else could it be? Yeah. What else could it be? Hello, Steve. Final liberty? 24 hours. Kathy, too? Yeah. Well, that's handy. Great. You may be a rich man tomorrow. Find that wealthy charity patient for me. Character called Pop. Says to tell you he's betting a deuce for you in the fifth race. So, we finally met our famous pop where? She was like a nice old character. A little eccentric. Yeah. Yeah, he's eccentric, all right. He hates our guts. I don't mean just us. I mean everybody who's ever gone beyond the sixth grade. That's why he pushes money into the hands of the boys. Gives them a sense of superiority. And don't let him fool you with that eccentric old man act. He'll let you get into him for more than you can hope to pay back. Sneering look in his eye. He's a big man with a big buck. What is it, Steve? You're overboard on Pop, you know that. Steve. Maybe I am. I'm just... Look at that. Come on, kid, tell me, what is it? You're not going to solve it by trying to digest it. It's more than just you and Kathy, isn't it? Who's in those nightmares you have when you're trying to sleep? I, I, I don't know, Fred. I, I don't even know left field anymore. I swing hard. There's nothing at the other end for my fist to smash into. I, I'm worn out swinging at air. Look, Steve, you're beginning to hate everybody who has one buck more than you. Even a broken down old character with elevator bells in his head. It started with him, but your hate won't stop there. So what am I supposed to do about it? Marry Kathy now. Money or no money, marry her. Before you ruin your life. And hers. Great. Swami Gilbert has all the answers. Marry Kathy and settle down to a fine and beautiful life. Set up home in a hospital and raise a large family of cute little psychos. Hey, Doc, got a match? When's your liberties? Tomorrow, midnight to midnight. Boss wants you. East River Park, south of the Williamsburg Bridge. Be there, 1 a.m. Still awake, Mr. Ringham? What time is, is it? 6.10. Mm. Can't sleep. Pain. Your legs coming along fine. All the bones. It's a muscular spasm that's bothering you. We want that bone to set just right. Can't sleep. Pain. Can't you give me something? Something. The nurse gave you a quarter grain of morphine three hours ago. Yes. But the pain. It 
wouldn't be fair to your heart to narcotize you any further. Just try to relax. Yes. You'll be asleep soon. Yes. Relax and you'll drift right off. Yes. 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 Yes, I visited my sister again today. Oh, found a little girl in bed? Nothing human. Same recurrent fever, same muscular atrophy. Poor kid, she tries so hard to walk, even a few steps. You know why? Just to make her mother happy. Tears your heart out. We really don't know very much, do we? Like Pop said, big words out of big books. But when it comes right down to it... There's one thing I know for sure. There's no law that says we can't go out for a cigarette and a breath of air. As long as I leave a nurse in the ward. A very sound RX. Let's go. Blemishes are hid by night, and every fault forgiven. The world should live by night. Dark draws people together. They can feel the need for each other. But the world gives the night to the sick. It keeps for itself daylight that lets men look into faces filled with fear and hatred. Are you filled with fear and hatred? All the time. Good. Then you're bound to be a great man one of these days. That's the second time that prediction's been made tonight. Who was the other Cassandra? The seventh son of a seventh son named Pop Ware. <laughs> then you're right in the Hall of Fame now. Pop's never been wrong. Your family lives in Los Angeles, don't they? Mm. What are they like? Just folks. Brothers and sisters? Two sisters. A girl? Both girls. <laughs> I mean, did you leave a girl back there? Well, with medical school in the war, I barely had time to give my dog a decent upbringing, let alone a girl. I bet it's a fine dog. Uh-huh. Well-trained, writes to me every week. I'd like to get to know your dog. You will. Did you know I'd been married once? Hmm. Well, I was. He left me with two things. Debts and beautiful memories. I thought it wasn't too tough to pay off the debts and forget them. But... Still carrying the torch for him? No, Fred, not for him. Maybe for what might have been, but not for him. There's no law that says we can't go out for a cigarette. There's no law that says we can. We'd better get back. Sure. <laughs> so, I decided to grab the bull by the horns. Of course, from this could come all kinds of lacerations. But people are always grabbing bulls by the horns. <laughs> yes, sir, I made up my... Just in time, my friend. Now, hear this. Kathy and me, we're going to be married. But right now, first chance we get at the crack of dawn before that bull gets away. Hey, I know. I'm glad to hear it, Steve. 
The smartest thing you could do. You think that's smart? Well, hear this. But I swear in you all to secrecy by the blood of Esculapius, if one word of this reaches Kathy before we're married, I promise to incise your collective throat with my own little scalpel. Now, <laughs> even though I've already promised myself that my little scalpel has tasted blood for the last time. And that's the big news of my life, my friend. I'm through. Through with scalpels, retractors, speculums, and that stinking fool downstairs. You mean through with the hospital? No, my bosom buddy. I mean I'm through with medicine. Through, finished, kaput. I'm turning into suture for a future. For a decent, normal life with Kathy. I've got me a job as far from medicine as you can get. I won't even permit a box of aspirin to be brought into my apartment. Yes, I've got that too. My own apartment. Three whole rooms with nobody in them but Kathy and me. And every time I hear an ambulance clanging by in the night, I'll just call Kathy a little closer and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and... <laughs> Steve, listen to me. You don't know what you're doing. This is suicide. You can't quit medicine. It's your whole life. Exactly the point. My life. Kathy and I can't wait another 20 years to live it. We haven't got the time. Look, Steve, I want you to report sick. Go to the room and wait there for me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Keep an eye on him, will you? Sure. I'm glad I caught you. You've got till tomorrow midnight, haven't you? Yes. So have I. Now she tells me. Hooked up? Yes, and a very dull booking it is. Too late to get out of it. Well, that's Anne Sebastian every time. Too late with too much. I'll take a rain check, though. You've got it. When? When what? When did he die? 
Mm. Aren't you interested in how and what happened to him? Well, then why do you ask when? Where are you from, Doctor? Los Angeles. You haven't been here long, have you? I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't hear you. No, sir. Did you get to know Anderson pretty well? I'm sorry, Doctor. You'll have to speak a little louder. Fairly well. What did you do tonight? Nothing. You left here about midnight. It's now 3.20. Nothing? I, uh, went to a midnight movie. One of those joints on 42nd Street? Yes. Alone? Yes. Of course. I don't know very many people in the city. Still quite a stranger. Yes. Oh, but you know what 42nd Street is, all right. Yes. And the name of that picture house you went into? Sure, it was the... What is this? I don't understand why you're asking me all these questions. I don't understand why you ask when. I remember I was once told that a friend of mine died suddenly. And you know what my first words were, hmm? They were, what happened to him? Not when, what? What picture did you see tonight? I'm, I'm a little confused. I, it's been a terrible shock. I, I don't know what I asked. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. Doesn't mean a thing. What picture did you see? You won't believe this, but... But you were dog-tired, you slept all through it, and you don't even remember what they were showing, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that happens all the time. But you did leave the hospital tonight. Of course I did. Anderson's body was found about an hour ago. That's when you were sound asleep in that picture house on 42nd Street. Oh, I know what a terrible inconvenience this is, Doctor, but we won't detain you long. What do you mean? I'll have to ask you to come with me over to the East 22nd Street Police Station. We can talk a lot easier over there. Look, Lieutenant, I... You don't mind, do you? Questioning the Anderson case. Still waiting. For what? For you to tell me what happened to Anna. I'm sorry. I meant to say for you to ask me what happened to Anderson. All right, what happened? His body was found in the river at the foot of 29th Street. The medical examiner said he hadn't been dead more than a couple of hours. Accident? Bruce on the head. That could have been caused by the pilings in the river. In any event, it wasn't the blow on the head that killed him. He drowned. That's what the M.E. says. You say you've only been in New York for a few weeks? No, I've been here before. Los Angeles, eh? Yes. Do you think if you tried real hard, you could remember the name of the picture you slept through? I can point out the theater. It figures that Anderson died somewhere between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. You left the hospital a little after midnight. Yes. And you went straight to that midnight picture. We talked to the doctors who were in that room when Anderson announced that he was quitting medicine. I was there, too. He was depressed, eh? Why should he want to quit medicine? It, it's an involved story. We've got all right. He wanted to get married. To Kathleen Hall? Yes. Have you seen her yet? Well, she'll be here in a little while. You, uh, you're out at the University of Southern California, aren't you? Yes. You asked one of those interns to keep an eye on Anderson until you got back. Why? I was worried about him. Now, that's what I want to find out. Why were you worried about him? Just his mental state. Couldn't figure what he might do? I was just worried. I might say. Say? What do you mean? What year? 48. What does that mean? The year I got out of school. Did I ask you what year you got out of school? Well, you just You said... think pretty fast, don't you, Doctor? All right, Lieutenant, get to the point. Stop trying to show me how clever you are. No, no, Doctor. That's
that's no way to talk to the lieutenant. Well, I'm tired. Ask your questions and let me go to bed. You're a pretty nervous young man. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Miss Hall, Lieutenant. Sorry we had to bring you here at this terrible time. It's all in there. We slipped out of Miss Hall's door. We slid under the carpet. Just turned up. Too bad. You know of any reason why he committed suicide? Got the school 20 minutes ago. Fill me in. Anderson resident of the hospital suicide. She Kathy? Yes. Who's he? Dr. Gilbert. Bunk with Anderson in the hospital. Inspector Gordon. The deceased ever give you any indication he might do this? Only what I've already told Lieutenant Lally. All right, Lally. You can send Miss Hall home now. I want to talk to Dr. Gilbert alone. Would it be all right if I took her home, Lieutenant? Sure. She'll wait for you outside. It's hard. I didn't get here any too soon. Lally doesn't like your smell. He was ready to shake you down all the way. He's beginning to get to me, all right. Now I know what it feels like on the other side of the desk. Looks like you were right, Fred. It's more than just a girl. Look, here's my quick figure. Forster and Anderson were in over their ears. Forster wanted to quit, threatened to squawk. He got the bullet. Anderson just cracked under the pressure. What were they juggling, Fred? I don't know. I don't know. There's something there and I can't get it. Is there some kind of a hustle going on? What's your best guess? The only character on the make is Pop, the old man. What do you mean he's on the make? The horses. He's always doping them for the kids, hustling them for bets. They bet with him and never pay when they lose. Doesn't make sense. Has he tried it on you? Yeah. Yeah, he's tried it all right. You know, I think I'll get hungry for a buck. Let him get me hooked and see what the play is. I just won't believe it, Fred. If we could only understand what pushed me. It was only a few hours ago I was standing right there when he said he was going to marry you. Did you know he was going to quit medicine? Oh, he couldn't, Fred. Medicine was his whole life, everything. Yes, I know. Was there something else worrying him apart from the hospital and your personal problem? I don't know. Had he ever given you any indication that he was fouled up and something had gotten beyond him? He never confided in me. Never anything of any real importance. The guy has to talk to somebody. Was there anyone at the hospital that he had confidence in? No, you know how it was, Fred. Never really friendly with anybody. There was just one person he would spend some time with. Bill Foster. Here it is, boys. My three star special of the day. Rollo and the third at Family Coat. Any takers? We four across the board. Dr. Gilbert, four across. That's 12 bucks. You're on. Nose. Barrel headed Jamaican. Well, I'll try it once more. There now, isn't it priceless? Isn't that ingenious? And look, look, uncanny. 
positively uncanny. Very clever, but I've bought the little girl so many mechanical toys. Perhaps an animal of some kind. Mm -hmm. Ah, I have it right here. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, indeed it is. So much character. Don't you think so, Dr. Gilbert? Yes, yes, it has. We'll take that, Mr. Day. Oh, thank you, Paul. I'm sure it will please your sister's little girl. That will be uh, $5.95, including the tax. Thank you, Mr. Day. Thank you, Mr. Bachelor. She's really got a big kick out of that giraffe. Yeah, she did seem a little bit better today. I'll see you at dinner. All right. Oops. Hey, Doc. Got to see you. Feeling sick? Yeah, I'm feeling sick all right, but no medicine's gonna help me. Well, what's wrong? Can you come down to my room for a minute? Can't talk here. Let's go. Gosh, I'm in trouble. What kind of trouble? Big trouble, the worst kind of trouble. Money trouble. Doc, you know I never pressure, but, but I gotta have it right now. How much? Uh, hundred and forty-three dollars. That's what you owe me. Hundred and forty-three. Yes, but how much do you need? All of it, right now. All of it. It's almost three months' pay. But I gotta have it. I, I just gotta have it. That bad, huh? Boys, it's my neck. I tell you. Well, what happened? For the last ten days, I haven't had one winner. Not one. I lost more than I can get up. And the bookie don't want to wait no more. That's nothing to get panicky about. Just tell him he'll have to wait. There's nothing he can do about it. Nothing he can do about it. <laughs> All he can do is send his boys to take care of me. See that I'm tucked away nice in some alley. Has he threatened you? Threatened me? I'd settle right now for a simple fractured skull. Why don't you go to the police? The police, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can just see them. Very happy to supply an armed guard night and day for the distinguished pop wear. And, and, and if I do cry, cop, and they pick up this bookie, where am I? The boys outside will take care of me in spades. Have you asked any of the other boys for the money they owe you? Not a prayer. They're strapped. This bookie, pop. He's just trying to scare you. He wouldn't dare do anything to you. No? What do you think happened to Foster and Anderson? You mean he had Foster killed? And he drove Anderson to suicide? All I know is they fed with him on their own. Okay, I'll... I'll try to raise the money for you. I, I don't think I can, but I'll try. Wait for me. I'll, I'll make some calls. Me? I ain't even going out of this hall till you get back. And I left him there with the shakes down in the basement. He's a frightened little man. Call the boss and have him round up all the bookies in the precinct. Right away. And I'll keep pushing the old guy. Well? No dice, Pop. You know what this means for me, Freddy. I try, but what can I do? It's all right, Doc. You tried. I know you tried. Ain't your fault. Look, Pop, maybe we can still square it. Take me to the bookie. Let me talk to him. I'll sign a note for you. Just let me talk to him. Maybe I can convince him. Oh, that's grand of you, Freddy. 
That's real grand here. But it's no use. No, it's... They only talk to cash. And the truth, Doc, I don't even know who the big boy is. I do business with a guy, a runner, who's been told to get the money off of me, or, or else. At least let me talk to the runner. Maybe I can... Wait. There. Yeah. There is one way. One way you can help me, Freddy. How? Yeah, one way. And you could do it, Freddy. You could do it. A little white stuff. Yeah, could clear myself with that. Just a little white stuff. White stuff? Pills. Couple of half grains. Very small, very valuable. Just a couple of half grain pills? What do you say, Freddy? What do you say? I had to get you here right away. There's no book here, it's narcotics. That's how we hooked the kids. Foster couldn't take any more, so they took him. Anderson wanted to run away, quit medicine, anything to get away from it. I think you're right. Well, do I deliver and make the arrest? No. I figured the old party for a stooge. We've got to get the pusher and the boy with the piece, Mr. Big. You play along. Get the stuff to him. How do you get your hands on him? Well, all I have to do is write the Rx, give it to the ward nurse, and she'd... She administers the... Angle. Muscular spasm. You mean you have to work through the ward nurse? She can hold the stuff up. Without her cooperate, what's the matter? Nothing. Well, pay attention when I talk to you. Getting soft in your old age? Yeah, I guess I am. That's how she hooked Foster and Anderson. I thought she was leveling with me. Make up your mind she's hooked into this. She's all set up for you. Follow me? Yes, I follow you. You got me worried. I'm worried about you. Well, I'm all right. I'll notify narcotics it's turned into a white stuff job. You go right on down the line like the other kids. Let them hustle you and keep delivery. Okay. threatens to kill him. No. Makes me feel it's all my fault. Owes a lot of money, he can't pay, he's scared stiff. Fred. He thinks that's what happened to Foster and Anson. I don't believe it. The police, why doesn't he go to the police? He's scared. He says they'd get him anyway. How much does he need? More than any of us can raise. You know what he wants me to do? Yes. Get white stuff. White stuff? Narcotics. I don't understand. To square himself with the bookie. Then that's the way we must do it. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You don't know the city like I do, Fred. Of course they'll kill him. Police or no police. Don't we see them right in our own morgue? You can stay out of it, Fred, but... I'll do what I can. Man, it's no good. Believe me, you'll never get away with it. But we can, we can. If we stick together. 
It's simple. It's so simple, it's silly. How? At rounds, it's up to you to decide which patient needs narcotics during the night. But the order I write goes to the nurse who's in charge of the narcotic cabinet. The stuff is sent to me, isn't it? I'm responsible for administering it and entering the dose on the patient's chart. In the morning rounds, the doctor can tell if the patient's been narcotized. The patient will be narcotized. I give him phenobarb. In the morning, it's impossible to tell the difference. You give the patient phenobarb. Well, don't you see? There's no record kept of that. Darling, we must. It's so easy to help him just this once. All you have to do is write out the Rx. No narcotics missing or stolen. Everything's in order. Oh, no, I, I, I've got to think about it. I've got to have time to think about it. I come to thank you, Freddy. You saved my life. Forget it. I gave this stuff to the bookie. Yeah, it sure saved my life, Freddy. Forget it. Yeah, forget it. But it ain't that easy. What do you mean? I gotta have more. I don't blame you for getting upset. I got upset, too, when this bookie, he says to me, Pop, I like the quality of this merchandise. I can make five out of one at a very fancy price. You see, Doc, he wants more of the same. Get up. I, I'm really very sorry about all this, Doc. I got you into it, and I couldn't like you more if you were my own son. But you, you think it all out. I know you'll do the right thing for me, for yourself, for Miss Sebastian. She should be very unhappy in jail. Got us hooked and we'll get in deeper and deeper. There must be some way out. We've got to think. Plan some way out. Plan, plan. What? What can we do? Fred, if he goes to the police, there's no choice for us. We have to figure some way out for ourselves. But we need time. How do we get the time? Only one way. We have to play along with Pop.
me get enough stuff. It's not safe. We'll, we'll have to wait till some new patients come in. You gotta write more. I can get rid of all you give me. This ten bucks for you for each pen. I don't want it. Now you can pick up 60, 70 bucks a week for yourself. More than you get here in a month. Won't be long before you can open your own office. Leave the hospital. Then we'll be able to do a fine business together. No more pinning with a few pills. A real fine business. Horse is ready. The old man is not loading the stuff. He never leaves the hospital. And the girl? He turns the stuff back to her. She makes the drop. The toy shop, huh? Yeah, you crack at daybreak, go all the way. Then start down 29th Street toward the river. What time? 6.20 on the nose. Right, be there. Right now. If he tries to push me, I'm going to the police. Hey, darling, listen to I me. I just you can't, can't take it. You know you can't quit now. Foster couldn't. He thought he could quit. So did Anderson. You see how wrong they were? Nah, you don't want to quit, lad. You're just a little upset. Maybe what you need is a little something for your nerves, a little sedative. Now, you're a bright young doctor with big words and big books. You can prescribe something for yourself, something that'll relax you, make you see how foolish you're being right now. A little white stuff, for instance. No, no. We're through. I'm finished. I've got to tell the police.
were spotted on the fire escape. I couldn't get near the river. He moved too fast for me. He was Mr. Big himself. We got Sebastian Page at the nurse's home. She knows what you are. Make the arrest. Was. Pop, what have you been doing? You're not making sense. Believe me. Believe me, Fred. When you came to me, it was the first time. You worked Foster and Anderson. I was to be the next pigeon. No, Fred, no, no. You and Pop. You the toy store for the drop. The day you took me there, the day you forgot your bag. That's how you delivered the stuff. Fred, that's not true. I Stop never... Stop it. The store's been knocked over, and your cute friend, Mr. Day, hasn't stopped singing since the arrest. All right, Fred. That's the way it was. I couldn't help myself. Why? Why couldn't you? I needed the money. Foster and Anderson, and you needed the money. But not for me, not for myself. For the kid. Help pay for treatments, help her walk again. By that time, I was in so deep, I couldn't get out. I had to go on. Let's go. Fred, you can't. You can't. No matter what's happened, no matter what I've done, tell me you didn't care for me. Tell me you felt nothing for me, even for a little while. Oh, God, oh, darling. I'm sorry. You're under arrest. Go ahead. 